Hi guys, Gaming Bear here. You probably remember a look like this. The uh, the very first garage you had, apart from these uh, couple of uh, premiums I've got. And this is how you looked with a very basic crew. Well, I've been asked by Gary Pico Pixola to actually do a uh, review of how to put mods on. And I thought, well, while I'm putting mods on and looking at how things are done, I may as well do a look following from the uh, the tech tree right the way up from the basics as you can see my SEA account is very very basic this is how the tech tree looks at the moment and I want to uh, to move up from this position basically from nothing to try and help you to move from this situation where you've just got the very basics I would try and show you the Russian account but they're actually doing an update ready for, for 9.8 so let's have a look at the uh, the American through to the American where you've got the uh, very basics in here let's have a look at the, uh, the tech tree following up at the moment the best way is to follow one single line focus on one and then move your crew up from that line right the way through Right, here we are on the uh, the main EU account. It, you can probably see two rows. You can get a few tanks on at once, but it's difficult to see. So I actually start being selective and then choose, say, a single country and a, or a single type of tank. Say, let's look at Germany. You've got loads. So even though it's two, it's cut down to just light tanks. And then I find a two row format so much easier and you can see we've got the uh, construction depot actually putting tanks together which you can change with the mods the different backgrounds so this is an unusual one that you may not have seen before so you'll see that I periodically change them so starting off on each each line you can see the carousel now we've got four different lines these are just the uh, the heavies four different rows of heavies Whereas I could have all of the tanks at once. So these are just the uh, the Russians. And you can see there's quite a few. Whereas if you go through each of the tech trees. China. There's less. So you could possibly. I, I usually go for three tiers. So you can see things more easily. So France. As you get towards the end. Four is okay. So you can get things on one page. Germany no chance too many so even even with four rows it's just not enough the UK similar situation four rows may just be okay to get most of your tanks on the US similarly there's a lot of vehicles Russia back to the Russia so and finally Japan very easy to get into uh, to this th number of rows so I'm thinking that uh, the best best for me to allow me to see the tanks more clearly I normally go for uh, for three rows but I've put four on to demonstrate right I get my my mod packs from um, Odin Mortis and so it's uh, HCP mod pack dot Odin Mortis dot com go into the mod pack so mod pack download then you, you get this screen. Click the download screen and it'll come. Uh, do, do you want to run it? So click run. It'll then say, run a security scan will say it's not commonly downloaded. And you click on actions. Actions will then give you the chance to run anyway. So then you just run the program, which will then take you into the next stage. But as I'm doing the uh, upload of it at the moment, it'll cause problems if I, if I run it again with it running in the background. So you normally do run anyway, and unless it's been bugged. So you should always check any software that you're uploading. So get the download, run a security scan on it before you then do this, just in case it's got a virus. So do a virus check on it first then run it after you've checked it so you know that it's safe to put on your system and run the mod pack at that point 
and we'll get on to that in a minute. Right, once you get into the mod pack, you look at it for the first time and you think, oh, what the frack is going on here? What do I do? Where do I start? There's too many things. Which one do I blink and click on? Right, so I run through one section at a time, put in a clean installation, region changer I've put on, as I use so many regions uh, for replays, but you don't have to. Mod pack, yep, tells you what mod pack you're using. XVM, I always update the uh, the XVM, and as you see, I've just done an install on the uh, the Russian server. We're going onto the EU account, so you click the type of uh, information you want on the clan icons. So that's it. So click on your server, and it'll it'll update on the the side with the the icons to to show you which one that suits your server. Then, I've gone down to uh, the rows of tag names. I use XVM config, the 0525, large, with all of the tank names and hit points. I've got the dead tanks marked and showing the last known position of, uh, of enemy tanks, which I find very useful. Coming down, I've gone for uh, the uh, over-target marker. It's just entertaining, so th that's what I've chosen. Showing the team, and then enabling the, uh, the tank stats. So it, it, if you highlight the pointer over a tank, it'll give you details of that tank. So it can help you get used to the details of other tanks that you may not have seen before. I've gone for large uh, hit point bars. So that's why mine are larger, and you can select to, to to give you the details of how many hit points your opponent are actually on. So that can be quite useful in the background. Nothing else highlighted, just uh, own squad vehicles I've highlighted as well. I've gone for um, Watt Labs version 10, uh, the 10th colour step, to show me the progression for stats, which I find quite useful. Tank Carousel, I put it back to uh, to three rows. And I'm showing all of the information because I find that very useful for me personally. But you can choose what selection you want. So you can uncheck these or only check the ones you actually want to use. So I'm putting in uh, personal battle scores, which I find useful. So that uh, helps me stats-wise and shows me the battle results as they progress and how my WN8 is progressing, the amount of damage per tank, what you're doing. So you can try and improve different tanks. And then you can see which ones you're good at and which ones you're not so good at. So it can help you focus your abilities on playing tanks that you're better with. Sixth Sense, I've got a Sixth Sense icon which uh, comes up and I've, I've gone for a, a softer tone. Uh, I made the mistake of go, going for standard and hadn't changed that. But this is so much better because people listening to replays, it's not blowing their ears off. And I've got a Superman icon there uh, that, uh, that, uh, that comes up when... Uh, when I'm spotted. Tank, con tonko, uh, tank contours. I've gone for, for yashes. Crosshairs. Gone for standard uh, arcade. DG sight. Crosshair for artillery. I've gone for jimbos. And normal full option. Details of the penetration. I've gone for the PD PMOD mod, enhanced pen indicators, and shows the, uh, the effective arm class and penetration of, uh, of the tanks you're looking at. SPGs, I've gone for the Sword of Damocles uh, gun sight. Server side, I'm going for Melty. Free cam mode, which allows you to move around the battlefield, which I find very useful. Zooming in. I like having the most magnification as I'm going through, so I use a times 500. And the zoom factor of 1.6 to 48. Looking down, damage panel indicators. I've gone for the, uh, the, the showing the bounce hit log, so I know what I'm bouncing, so whether, whether I'm angling well. So rather than not show it, I'm showing what I'm bouncing as well as what's hitting me, so that I, I know whether I'm angling perfectly, so I can judge during a battle if I can possibly re-angle or whether it's just no point at all. 
damage indicator, I've gone for the Q QDLY damage indicator. Targeting, I've gone for uh, for Mashi version 1. Effective armor mods, yep, go for uh, the math mod. And an exact c shell cooldown. So I know exactly how long it's going to be until I reload. Which I find very, very useful. Damage. I've gone for the original, but if you're on the NA server, it's restricted to only the spotted enemies. So th this is, I think, a slight advantage. But it's restricted and not to be used on the American server. So I, d I don't have it on the uh, the American server. Battle scores, hit point pools, I find very, very useful. And I've gone for the colourblind mode so that people can see in the replays everything that, uh, that's going on. Details of spotted uh, server. So th this, I would say, sh shouldn't should either be everywhere or nowhere but if it's allowed in Europe and Russia then it should be allowed in NA but I've conversely I think it should actually be banned everywhere if it's banned in America it should be banned everywhere so I'm 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 of the opinion well if it's able to be used I, I can see that it can be a a benefit so I use it because everyone else is using it, but I think that you shouldn't have it. But to be competitive with everyone else at the same level, they're going to have it. You need to have it as well. So sadly, it's it's an arms race, and I I think that this should be banned everywhere. But because it's not banned by not using it, I'm putting myself at a, a, a disadvantage competitive wise. So. Sadly, I've got to go with it, but I don't want to go with it. But for competitiveness, I have to. So that's that sort of thing. I want to be banned everywhere because either everyone should have access to it or no one. So, and I th I think no one should. So that's that's just my opinion. You may disagree, but I'm going with it because I don't want to be at a disadvantage at the higher tiers, which I found that I was. Aiming assist. Now, this is a bit also a bit uh, contentious. I like I like, actually like the three D view in in Arty. So and it is a benefit. So this is another one which is allowed, which I use. Some say it's cheating, but while it's available, but it's available to everyone everywhere. So as it's a level playing field, I don't see it as a problem. There's not a, an overwhelming number of arty players and i think they need some help to be able to help them to learn their skills to get to the higher levels but i'm thinking at possibly higher levels when they have those skills already that they should then not be allowed to use it at higher levels or else at that stage when everyone knows what they're doing to remove it completely I've gone for safe shots to stop me shooting uh, friendlies or firing into a corpse that's already dead and wasting shots and wasting ammunition and credits. So that's a, that's quite a useful thing for not for saving money and increasing your percentage uh, hit rate because you, those times you just fired and he's dead, or else there's a fraction of a second your your body and your mind aren't quite together. So that allows you just the time to uh, to oh he's dead. So you save that shot. The set. This is a mod that's allowed on, uh, like the others were, weren't allowed in America, but this is allowed in America and Europe, but not in, in Russia. I, th I think there should, should be consensus, that it, things should be banned everywhere. I don't see why certain regions have things and other regions don't. If it's bad in one area, it shouldn't be allowed anywhere. And so that's just my opinion. But I'm going with what's allowed because other people of this tier are using the same mods, and if you don't uh, use the same mods, you're allowing them to be more competitive and getting the edge on you on the battlefield. So it's it's a dog-eat-dog -dog 
uh, arms race where you need to be competitive. And I think this sort of thing should be banned everywhere, not just as it is in Russia. If it's banned in Russia, it should be banned everywhere, in my opinion. So that's the sort of thing, you know, that it, you've just got to adapt to it. Right, hangers-wise, looking at uh, the, the the hangers, the Miko hanger I really like, which is a, is a really fun anime garage, which I use very regularly. The Bat Cave I like, Reichstag I normally go for. They're very interesting ones, but you've got many, many other options. So you just tick the uh, the option of the garage you want. So I'm, I'm going to put the uh, the Miku anime garage on. If you whether you like it or not, but you can choose which hanger you uh, you actually want to uh, to use. Oh, I've shown you that before. In fact, let's go for Prokhorovka. I haven't shown you uh, Prokhorovka before. Right, coming down. I'm I don't use that, but you can. Automatic equipping of skins I found very very useful. So this is things like the binoculars, cabinets, things that you can put on and auto automatically re-equipping your tank. Every time you click on the model, it'll automatically re-equip it for you, rather than having to search for that equipment. It just saves time. I, I find that very useful. Yep, ammo reworking, just uh, re resetting everything back up again. Right, hangar-wise, we're going for, uh, you've got lots of options. You go for things like uh, the Miku hanger, which I really like. The Miku version 2 is a really nice anime hanger, which uh, you've seen on some of my replays. I really like the anime side. The Batcave, very, very nice. The Berlin Reichstag, very nice. And all of these you can choose and work your way through, depending on what um, what you actually like. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to show you uh, Prokhorovka, which you may not have seen before, which is quite an interesting one from this perspective. Looking down, tank carousel, highlighting the tank in blue, which uh, which you're looking at. Let's have a look. Automatically yeah, putting ammo on, I find very, very useful. So it updates things automatically, and it shows in Grandpa's mod. Hanger. I've gone for Aslan's. Sadly, at the moment, it would normally have a picture here showing you what uh, what's available and each each person's uh, tank hanger icons, the view, the list, and how it is. But sadly, that's not available. It usually is. So that's that's something which I can't show you at the moment. I'll probably do in another review, and we'll have another look at that. I got gone for uh, for Mavs Ultra Fog Remover. It uses a little bit more power, but it um, allows you to see things more clearly. There's also you. I've heard the professionals also just uh, switch all the uh, the graphics down so bushes and things that, and grass that they don't need to have in the way aren't in the way. But I I like being able to see things. I like the beauty of the game. So yeah, the APCR I've gone for red and gold to show you th so you can see by the color that your tanks hit by what sort of uh, ammo they're using. So I find that that quite useful. And I go for uh, the penetration and ricochet shots showing what what's hitting me where it's hitting and the by the color I know what uh, what's working what isn't working session stats I keep the session stats current so I can monitor how I'm progressing with each tank so that affects XVM which I find very useful and that's basically it I don't go for any any other sounds I have done they're quite entertaining. I used to have jingles on and it was brilliant, but the voiceover on top of the uh, the replays didn't sound very good. So you click next. So auto equip, session stats. I go for allied silhouette, banned in Russia. Like I said, it should be uh, everywhere or else if it's banned in one place, it should be banned everywhere, but I don't, I want to be competitive. Click go. These icons I've already got. So I unclick those, click next, and that's it. It starts uh, putting the mod pack on for you, and that's it. So that's the Odin Mortis, Odin Mortem mod pack, and that's uh, what you do. So you then you just let it run through, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So bear with me, guys. So that's the uh, details of how to put the uh, the mod pack on.
basic details of, uh, of selections and choices that you can make and to change your, your garage around so it's very very useful so um, have a look at the other uh, gameplays and remember when you see the library screens always click pause to be able to give you the choices to uh, to be able to select the screens in the background and then get through to the great content the great reviews to see all the great people around the uh, the net who are playing world of tanks check out their stuff but remember always pause the screens you don't want to hear me blathering just pause the screen and make the choice to uh, to go to whatever great review jingles qb sir fosh whoever you want to uh, to look at their works just use that time so pause it click in the library and take you th yourself through to whatever you want to see and there will be links through to everything that you can possibly want and everything that people who've done great things on on YouTube have put up and so we'll check the library check what's there it'll keep updating there'll be more and more content as time goes by as more and more people produce things they'll have their own screens their own drill down menus behind those so you click on the the, the special selections then click on jingles then it'll go into uh, screens in the background for breakdowns of the stuff that he's done and then you can click straight to the links of whatever you want to see or else you can go directly into the tank reviews for each tank in the game which will then link you to those reviews in a different way so it's like a library system but remember when you get to each screen always click pause and then it'll make it easier so you don't have to listen to to what I'm saying in the background just when you're used to it press pause stop the uh, the the screen and just then click on the connection that you want in the library to get to the great content that you really want to see in here so thanks guys this has been a bit about the uh, doing the mods so I hope it's been helpful and as you know I'm the gaming bear I love playing and I'm going to be carrying on with those uh, those reviews. I'm going to take up uh, this, the ways of pushing up from the low levels right the way through, and take you on a step step by step journey of how to uh, to start off from nothing and to move up to the heights, and then to be able to play tier tens and at that level, or in competition level at tier six, tier eight, depending on what uh, you want to do. So that, that we can focus individually on different levels of uh, of play that, that you want just let me know and i'll uh, i'll do vids for you so yeah hope you've enjoyed this i've been the gaming bear and you're fantastic thanks guys bye